Uh, so once again, let me greet you all in the name of Ahaya, the Hashem Yeshai Barak Um As I was mentioning uh, before the question, uh, this lesson we're going to cover today is one of those lessons that get us back to those early principles of Christ. And these are some of the things that keep us grounded and rooted in our belief in Christ. Even when the burdens and the cares of the world try to come and destroy our fervent spirit. Okay? Um, and this pretty much, I think this is in the spirit because just this past Advanced Academy lesson, we touched on temptation. And we went into how the temptations of this world and some of the things that we get entangled with with everyday life, sometimes it destroys the fervent spirit that we have to follow Christ. And one of the major things that our people get caught up in is finances. Okay? Chasing finances. Now, before we touch on this lesson, I first want to bring levity and clarity. Uh, because a lot of times we go into this lesson and you get people, instead of taking the information and using it with wisdom and understanding, uh, they take the information and then they they run with it without any level of balance. All right, and what I mean by that is the fact that we're touching on a lesson about going after finances, okay, chasing finances and chasing the cares of this world. You have a lot of people who will take the information. This may be extreme, but you may have some people who may up one morning and just quit their job. Uh, they separate themselves with, uh, from dealing with family matters uh, all types of things people do without using this information with wisdom All right. throughout this lesson you're going to understand once we touch on the lesson we're not stating that it's wrong if someone is working to provide for their families okay the Bible tells us that we must provide for our families for if one does not do so, they are worse than an infidel. So we understand that 100%. All right. Also, we're going to touch on a few things concerning education, the education system of this society. Now, once again, a lot of people take it without wisdom, and you'll have people who just straight up leave school. Some people who may be almost through college, they'll leave college because they think we're telling them to leave college because the wisdom... According to the Bible, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. We're going to give you both sides. We're going to give you the balance. We're going to give you what the Most High is saying. Then we're also going to give you the information to balance it out. All right. So we're not just going to give you the one-sided thing and have people think that we're telling them to quit their jobs and telling people not to think about, you know, finances as far as you know, taking care of their families and things of that nature. People going to school, getting their what the society would call education, all right? So uh, now that we just put that announcement out there so you, you can prepare yourself for this lesson, uh, we're now going to get into it. Uh, basically, this is a lesson I believe was put together by uh, one of the brethren uh, of the church. And uh, one thing I would like to mention is the fact that we commend uh, brothers, especially those who are a part of the uh, elders and deacons classes who are being prepared for leadership uh, to send in lessons, send in flyers, send in information uh, that can be used to inform the people. All right, We don't have a problem with that at all. And this is just one of the many uh, lessons that someone sent in. And uh, we made a few changes to it, but we thought this would be a good uh, lesson in order to help us in the spirit, especially during this rough time with the recession and uh, the financial woes that are taking place not only in America but throughout the four corners of the earth. We know a lot of our people are feeling pressure based on the financial woes that are taking place in the earth. All right, but one thing we got to understand, and this is the point of this lesson, all right, one thing we have to understand it is that these things are prophesied in the Bible. All right. The Most High knew there would be a time in which he would cause the collapse of these societies. 
part of the collapse of these societies is the fall of their financial system okay the most high stated that he was he would break the bread and the stay meaning the support the structure of the land of Egypt all right now we know modern day Egypt is what we call America okay which is also known as modern day Babylon so we understand based on Bible prophecy that a, an end would come to these kingdoms and with that end there will come a collapse to the financial system now a lot of our people are seeing this and instead of praising the most high that he's causing the fall of these societies which have kept our people trapped in captivity mentally physically and spiritually instead of thanking the most high for what he's doing a lot of us really are holding on or trying to hold on to this society and to some degree we're begging the most high to keep the society up so that we can get what we think we need out of the society when the most high tells us in the bible he told us through his son christ the messiah that he know the things that we have need of all right let's get that real quick in the book i believe it's matthew the seventh chapter where he says consider the lilies of the field the fowls of the air let's get that real quick and of course today we'll be using we'll be using the King James Version Bible okay the King James Version Bible all right you got it Matthew 6 and 30 all right let me correct that this Matthew the sixth chapter in the 30th verse now Christ is going to explain uh, Christ basically what he's explaining is some of the things that we may deal with through our daily lives a lot of us because we've been put inside of this box or Satan through his psychology his philosophy his religion and his society he have put us in a box okay and basically this box with this box comes the burdens and cares of this world but one thing we have to realize is the children of Israel is God's chosen people and as spiritual people is that the Most High Ahaya don't operate inside that box okay the Most High don't operate inside the box and the construct that Satan put together to keep you trapped okay the Most High operates outside of that he's not trapped and bound by the same pressures that you're trapped and bound by so when we call out we pray to the Most High we fast we link it to the Spirit and we call upon him firmly the Most High is able to hear our prayers and bring forth what we need okay in due season and if it's according to his will because you're not always going to get things when you think you should get them or when you think you need them you'll get them in due season when the Most High sees fit that you receive whatever you're asking for but let's go to the book of St. Matthew what's that Matthew 6 and 30 right Let's start at 27. Okay, Matthew chapter 6, verse 27. All right, go ahead. Matthew 6 and 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? So the question is, how many of you, with thought, add one cubit to his stature? In other words, how many of you can become taller just by thinking about it? Okay, go ahead. Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. And it says, Why take ye thought for raiment concerning the lilies of the field? Alright, now the question is, Why is he comparing us to the lilies of the field? Go ahead. How they grow? They toil you not. It says, The lilies of the field grow and toil not. Alright, they grow and toil not, meaning they don't sew and knit clothing. Alright. Go ahead. Neither do they spend. Neither do they spend, meaning the spindle. All right. Meaning the sewing machine, putting together clo clothing, garments, fabric. But yet what? Verse 29. And yet I say unto you, 
that even Solomon in all his glory. That even King Solomon in all his glory. And we know King Solomon at his greatest point was one of the greatest kings to ever rule the face of the earth. Was glorious in his power, in the way he dressed, in the way he clothed himself. But what? Was not arrayed like one of these. Even King Solomon in his glory was not arrayed or dressed as beautiful as the lilies of the field. Go ahead. Verse 30. Wherefore, if the Most High so clothed the grass of the field. So if the Most High did so to clothe the, the grass of the field. Or if he clothed the grass of the field so beautifully that it looks even better than King Solomon in his glory. Go ahead. Which today is, and tomorrow it is cast into the oven. Because today the flowers are there, but yet tomorrow it will be cast in the oven. Okay. Go ahead. Shall he not much more clothe you? Shall he not much more clothe you? Meaning, aren't you worth more than the lilies of the field? Go ahead. O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. And that's the point. A lot of us lack faith. So we go into that spirit where we're constantly worrying, constantly stressing, constantly thinking about where we're going to get this from, where we're going to get that from. Not saying you shouldn't think, you shouldn't plan. Okay? Because we're not just we're not oblivious to the way society works. But what we're saying is that you gotta take in consideration with the most high. The power of the most high, what the most high has prepared for us. Okay? The most high does exist. And he is able to provide to those who need. Alright? Go ahead. Verse thirty one. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? So it says, take no thought. Meaning, don't worry. Don't stress about what you shall drink. What you shall eat. Go ahead. Go ahead. Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? With where or wherewithal we shall be clothed. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Because after all these things do the Gentiles seek. And that's the point. The Gentiles are not taught to operate based on faith. They're taught to operate based on their credentials. What they can obtain with their own hands. All right? What they can obtain based on the society that Satan set up. This is how the Gentiles are taught to operate. All right? But with us, it's not so. We're people created to operate based on faith. I'm not saying we don't think, we don't use our mind, we don't use critical thinking, but the Most High wired us to use faith. To be able to operate in this earth. Go ahead. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye need have need of all these things. Because the Most High know you got need of all these things. The same way He know that the grass of the field, the lilies of the field, they need to be watered in order to stay alive, to grow, to be beautiful, to be glorious. The same way He know the birds and the fowls of the air need to be fed, the beasts of the earth need to be fed. He provides those things for those animals. The question is, are we not greater than these animals, these creatures? All right. So if the Most High knows we have need of these things, do you not think that the Most High will provide them? All right. Go ahead. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High. All right. That's the key. You got to first seek the kingdom of the Most High. All right. You got to first seek the kingdom of the Most High. And that's the principle that a lot of us lack. Okay, when we first get the truth, we, we, we're rooted in scriptures such as this when we first get the truth. Alright, these are the scriptures we live for when we first get the truth. But later on down the line, sometimes you get drawn off into certain things and you lose the basic principles which keep you rooted. Okay, which keep you with the sound mind. Alright, so it says, seek the kingdom of heaven first. Then what? And his righteousness. And his righteousness, which is his laws, statutes, and his commandments, as they were fulfilled by the son, Yeshia. All right, the anointed. Go ahead. And all these things shall be added unto you. And all the things you worry about, all the things you stress about, will be added unto you. All right. And that's the key point of the whole thing, the whole matter. So now the question is, we know what the scriptures say concerning First, seeking the kingdom and having these things added. 
The question is, what do the scriptures say about someone who does the exact reverse, the exact opposite? They seek the finances, the riches, and the glory of this kingdom before they seek the glory, righteousness, and kingdom of the Most High. All right, let's get the book of Proverbs, the 23rd chapter and the 4th verse. All right, and let's see what the Bible says about those who seek to gain, to, to gain the glorious status and the elite status, the quote-unquote elite status of this society. All right, now I'm going to state again, we're not stating that you shouldn't work and do certain things to take care of your family. All right, but there's a such thing as chasing money. Okay, being on the paper chase to the point where you're trying to obtain a certain status, the elite status of this society. Okay, let's get the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, and I believe that was verse 4. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Proverbs 23 and 4. Labor not to be rich. See what the Bible states? The Bible states, labor not to be rich. Go ahead. Cease from thine own wisdom. Now it says, cease from thine own wisdom. Now the question is, why do you think when Solomon wrote this, he first stated, labor not to be rich. And then he followed up with, in the next line, he states, cease from thy own wisdom or thy own understanding. All right. Why do you think that follows up? Well, based on how we were taught to think, how we were raised in the society, we were taught that the only reason why you work into labor is to one day become rich. To one day obtain a certain level of status in this society. But the Bible says labor not to be rich. That's not the reason of labor. Christ stated, with food, shelter, and raiment, therefore be thou content. Okay? You're supposed to be content with the bare necessities, food, shelter, and raiment. Okay? But now when you're laboring to be rich, what happens? You think that what Christ said is good for us is not good enough. You don't think that the food, shelter, and raiment is good enough. Alright? You gotta have the extra luxurious things that this society promotes as being luxurious. When in reality, you don't need half the things that you desire. Half of these things you covet in the society, you don't even need. Alright? It's all psychology. Okay? All psychology, advertisement, that's what it's about. It's about psychology. Making you think and believe you need things that you don't need. And that's this is part of how Satan keeps us trapped in the society. All right, you don't need the newest pair of Air Jordans or the newest pair of Nike sneakers, the newest flyers pair of jeans, and the, the newest this, the newest that, the newest car. You don't need those things. The Bible says with food, shelter, and raiment, be therefore content all right read that again uh proverbs 23 and 4 labor not to be rich cease from thine own wisdom now you got to cease from your own wisdom why because you've been taught in a society that you labor to become rich you labor to become or be a part of the elite status of the society all right you labor to be the next michael jordan the next oprah winfrey not saying that you is wrong to try to you know use your skill or whatever you have in order to get what you can get out of this society but you can't glory in those things and you can't burden yourself in those things you have a lot of people who feel like they want to commit suicide and some people who go to the, the, the point of committing suicide because they can't obtain the image that Satan has set in this society the Western world society okay and this is why the Bible tells gives us these particular principles all right, labor not to be rich. What are you supposed to labor for? You're supposed to labor to seek the kingdom and the Lord's righteousness, as we read in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter. All right, go ahead. Verse five. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Will you set your eyes upon that which is not? Now, what does it mean? What does Solomon mean when he st stated, "Will you set your eyes upon that which is not?" He's going to explain it. Go ahead. For riches certainly make themselves wings it says riches certainly make themselves wings all right and now the closest thing i can compare this to for those who as kids used to go out and try to chase birds and catch birds 
imagine this, all right? Going back to childhood. For those who, like to, who used to like to go out and try to chase the birds and catch them, how many of you remember how difficult it was to catch that bird, that pigeon, all right? Now here it uses, as we read on, it's gonna use the example of an eagle, which is still a bird, but we're gonna use something we can relate to, which is a pigeon. Now as a child, you used to try to run as quick as you can. You thought that if you just ran as quick as you could, you can catch that pigeon. But what happened? As soon as that pigeon heard your footsteps, it went up and flew away. All right, another pigeon will come. You try to run as fast as you could because you thought in your mind you were taught you run as fast as you could, you can catch that pigeon. What happens? As soon as the pigeon hears your, your footsteps, it fills your presence, it flies away. So then what happens? As a child, you use some level of critical thinking. You go back to the drawing board. Okay. What if I decided to try to creep up on the pigeon, on the pigeon and tiptoe so he don't hear me? Maybe just with this plan, I can catch this pigeon before I fly away. Then what happens? You get up to the pigeon, you tiptoeing, and as soon as you reach out your hand, you think you're gonna touch that pigeon, but what happens? It flies away again. It's the same thing with money, all right? You sit back, you operate based on how you were taught in a society, which is you work hard enough, you'll be able to obtain a certain status in society. But what happens? You work hard, you do all the things that people told you to get what you can get in the society to obtain a certain status, and what happens? It fails, you don't get it. Just like when you tried to run as hard as you could and as fast as you could to catch that pigeon, but yet it flew away. Okay? You go back to the drawing board, you try something different, and it still don't work out. Why? Because it says, it says uh, money is what? It says for riches riches certainly make themselves wings it says riches make themselves wings which means if you chase riches you'll be chasing riches that'll become your work you'll be chasing that all your life because as soon as you think you've obtained the riches you think you should obtain they fly away okay and then soon you start to find out in this society there's certain levels you got to go through and certain things you got to go through to obtain that quote-unquote elite status okay so that's why it states that riches are like a bird with wings all right you can't you can't quite get it you can't obtain it just like you're trying to chase a pigeon you can't quite get it when you think you got it it flies away all right comes and goes go ahead they fly away as an eagle toward heaven it says they fly away as an eagle towards heaven all right, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, just uh, verse 48. All right, let's get that Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Go ahead. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Now we're going to ask that the, the the activity in the chat is brought down to a minimum or else we're going to have to pause the chat all right if you have any questions please hold your questions until the end of class and we'll be glad we'll gladly answer your questions after class okay but if we continue to get activity in the chat we're going to have to block and pause the chat all right Deuteronomy 28 and 48 it says therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Most High shall sin against thee. So some people may wonder why are we in this position in the earth to the point where we have to work hard and get finances. We got to go work for our enemies, work for the other nations in order to obtain some level of, of, of financial power in this society. Okay, you got to go to the other nations just to be able to feed and provide for your family. Some people ask why that's so. Read that again. Deuteronomy 28 48. Deuteronomy 28 48. Go ahead. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Now let's see part of what comes with serving our enemies. All right, go ahead. Which the Most High shall send against thee. Which the Most High shall send against you. 
okay so this is why we don't we don't look to bash the other nations based on the things they've done because the Most High sent these nations against us based on our disobedience. If you read the whole chapter, Deuteronomy 28, it'll give you the stipulations in which the Most High gave to the children of Israel to let them know that if you keep the commandments, I will place you above all the nations of the earth. If you break the commandments, I'm going to put you below all the nations of the earth. This is part of the curses that came with breaking the stipulation. Okay, go ahead. And hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness. And hunger, and thirst, and in nakedness. Meaning what? If you're thirsty, what do you got to do? You got to go serve your enemies so that you can pay for your water. All right? Either whether it's the water that's coming out of the tap or whether it's your bottled water. Dasani. Okay? Poland Springs. Uh, what's the other one? Avion Water. Okay, nature's best. If you want these things, you got to go and serve your enemy to achieve them. Okay? Go ahead. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. Uh, Brother Judah, can you send that again? I made a mistake and um, deleted it. Whatever you just sent. All right? Read that again. In hunger and in thirst and in and in nakedness and in one of all things. And hunger, thirst, and nakedness in one of all things, which means if you're thirsty, you gotta go serve your enemy to get water. And hunger. If you're hungry, you gotta go serve your enemy to eat. Okay, you gotta go work on his job, you gotta go earn his wages so that you can go and get yourself a meal. Alright? Whether you're going to the grocery store or you're going to the fast food chain, you're going to a nice or if you're going to a nice uh, restaurant, a nice Italian restaurant, so on and so forth. You still got to serve your enemy to obtain these things. All right. And then what? what was the last one? And in one of all things. And in one of all things. And I think it also mentioned nakedness, which means if you want your clothes, you want your nice designer clothes, or you just want your little simple stuff that you get from the the value store. You still got to serve your enemy to obtain it. All right. And in one of all things, meaning all things, such as your education. If you want to be educated, you got to go to the enemy. You want your driver's license, you got to go to the enemy. You want your passport, you got to go to the enemy. Okay, you want any level of credentials, licenses, you got to go to the enemy. Okay, that's what it means in one of all things. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Okay. All right, brother uh, uh, Damon. All right, appreciate that. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And it says he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he have destroyed you. Part of the, the curses that were fulfilled when we went into captivity. Alright, you can go see pictures of it in history books, on and so forth, of how yokes of iron were put on the children of Israel in their captivity. Now the key reason why we went to this was to show you that the way we operate today, trying to chase and obtain... The things of this earth are based on a curse that was placed on the children of Israel for their disobedience. Okay? But now the Most High is releasing us from these curses. So now we got to change our mindset. Our mindset can no longer be, let me chase as many riches as I can. Or let me obtain a certain level of status in the society. Let me be a part of the elite club of the society so that I can live like, for instance, the Joneses. <laughs> Just to give you an example. Okay, so that you can move on up like the Jeffersons. That's not the point of this gospel. Okay, that's not the goal of this gospel. The goal of this is to seek the kingdom of heaven first and the righteousness of the Most High, which are the laws, statutes, and commandments. All right. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 16. This is what you got to understand for those who think that because someone is of a higher financial status in the society, that that automatically makes them better than those who are of a low status in society financially. You're going to find out there's also a, a tool that Satan used to keep the poor, the downtrodden, and the meek of the earth caught up in this trap. Okay, to make you think that you're only worth what your spending power is or what your financial power is in this society. Now that may be so 
based on how this world uh, operates, but that's not so according to the Bible. It's going to show you in the book of Psalms. Okay? Psalms 37, 16. Psalms chapter 37, verse 16. A little that a righteous man hath. A little that a righteous man hath, meaning the little finances and resources that a righteous man have. Go ahead. Is better than the riches of many wicked. Is better than the riches of many wicked. So you can take all the financial power of the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Clintons, the Bushes, the Kennedys, the DuPonts, the McDonalds, so on and so forth. Take all these rich families of the earth and amass their riches. Put them all in one pile and it still will not equal up to the little that the righteous have. Okay? Why? Because the riches of the wicked is not going to buy them into the kingdom of heaven. Alright, it tells you that in scriptures. You're not going to be able to buy your way into the kingdom. Alright? And a lot of these nations who set up, the nations who are behind setting up the society under the power of Satan, they already understand that they're not written in the book of life. Hold that and give me the book of Revelation 17. Because the Bible speaks about a seed which was not written in the book of life. So these high people who are directly under Satan, these so-called Jewish power, so on and so forth, they understand that based on the prophecies concerning them, they have been written and blotted out of the book of life before, or they were, they were blotted out of the book of life before the beginning of the world. So that's why they got you in a society where, they, where you think that you got to chase money and do these things to be important in society. Because while you're doing that, you're not focused on spiritual things, the things that are going to help you get into the kingdom of heaven. All right. Let's get Revelation 17. Let me get the, uh, the exact verse. I believe it's verse... Let's, get, let's start from verse 7. Revelation 17 to 7. Revelation chapter 17, verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore, th wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that, that carrieth her, which have the seven heads and the ten horns. This is speaking about the Roman Empire. The beast with seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. Verse 8. The beast that thou sowest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. Go ahead. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So these people, these people's names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Which means they already understood according to prophecy that they would be blotted out. Now you're going to find out, or well, for those who have been in our past academies and studies, that the so-called Jewish powers which rule this earth are from the seed of Amalek. And even from the Old Testament, the Most High commanded that Amalek be blotted out of the earth. Okay? It tells you in the book of Numbers that Amalek would become the head of nations. Who's the head of nations? The so-called Jewish powers. They understand that they have been blotted out of the book of life from the beginning. So what do they do? They set up a society in which they have low morality. They have low principles and values that are based on the Bible. And they have the system in which you're constantly trying to define your worth based on how much money you can get. And while you're chasing this money, you fall into the same trap that they've already fallen into, that the Most High, you're falling into the same judgment that the Most High have already written for these people, which is not to obtain the kingdom. Okay? They're, they're designed a society under Satan so that you meet the same fate that they're going to meet at the end. So that's why we tell you, you got to refrain from trying to chase and think that finances is, is the end of all things. All right. And we're going to show you what is the purpose of your life. Because a lot of us think, as we read earlier in the book of Proverbs, we think that the purpose of our life is to chase money and get rich. Okay. Chase money, get rich and die. When the Bible tells you the purpose of mankind, and we're going to get it a little later. Let's move on to the next one. Let's go back to the book of Psalms 36, I mean 37, and uh, 17. Psalms 37 and 17. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. So the, the Most High stated that the arms of the wicked shall be broken. 
Arms in the Bible represent power, strength. So it says the strength of the wicked shall be broken, and this is what we're witnessing in this society. All the finances that they have amassed, and you can see that the society is falling. You would think with the billions and trillions and gazillions, however much money they got, they can be able to save their society and their kingdom from falling. But there's nothing they can do to stop what the Most High is bringing on their kingdom. Okay, on their society, on their world. Alright, so it says, For the, the arms of the wicked shall be broken. This is why the society is falling. This is why so many financial woes happening. Alright, now of course we know what goes on as far as them planning in order to have the financial collapse so that they can bring in the one world order. Okay, but at the end the Most High has said as to what happens with the fall of their society. Even after they achieve all that, the Most High is still going to bring a fall and a collapse to their kingdom. All right. Everything they're doing as far as their plans and bringing in a one world order is to try to keep Bible prophecy from taking place. They try to keep the Most High from sending back Christ to be able to bring forth the kingdom. Okay, A kingdom that will be set up for the children of Israel. But as the Bible states, their arms will be broken. They will not prosper in that, in that council. Okay, or they will not counsel in, in their thoughts, okay, their vain imaginations. Let's go to the book of Joshua, the sixth chapter. All right, Joshua 6 and 18. Because you're going to find out that it's not uncommon for our people who are even in the truth, who have the understanding of scriptures, who would try to go and chase money, finances, and riches, even at the expense of someone else's safety, or even their own safety, their own life. Okay, they put finances and riches over everything. All right, we're going to give you an example in the book of Joshua, the sixth chapter, in the 18th verse. Go ahead, Joshua chapter 6, verse 18. And you, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed, from the accursed thing. So the Lord commanded us to keep ourselves from the accursed thing. This is us coming into the land of Canaan under the command of Joshua, or the scriptures call. Or in Hebrew, Yahawashai. Alright, go ahead. Lest ye make yourselves accursed. Lest ye make yourselves accursed. Go ahead. When ye take of the accursed thing. When you take of the accursed thing. And make the camp of Israel a curse. You're going to make the camp of Israel a curse. And do what? And trouble it. And you're going to trouble the camp of Israel. This was the command the Most High gave us when coming into the land of Canaan. All right, or on our journey into the land of Canaan. There were certain things that we were not supposed to take. All right, Throughout the Bible, you got certain instances in which the Most High told us to spoil the nations, and you have certain instances in which the Most High told us not to touch anything that belonged to the nations because it was cursed. Okay, and this is one of those examples. Go ahead, verse 19. Verse 19. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Most High. So it says, All the silver, gold, vessels of brass and iron shall be consecrated unto the Lord. So those things, the brass, the iron, and all these things will be separated and consecrated unto the Lord, and they shall come into the treasury. Go ahead. They shall come into the treasury of the Most High. All right, let's jump down to chapter 7, verse 10. All right, now keep in mind, this is us uh, in the city of Jericho. The Lord told us not to touch any accursed thing that belonged to the people of the city of Jericho. All right, go ahead. Joshua 7 and 10. And the Most High said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Verse 11. Israel hath sinned. So the Lord commanded Joshua to get up. Why are you laying upon your face? The people of Israel have sinned. Go ahead. And they have also transgressed my covenant. And they transgressed the Most High Covenant. Now you wouldn't guess how the children of Israel cursed or, or, or broke the Most High's covenant. Go ahead. Let's see. And they also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing. So they broke the commandment and the covenant of the Lord by taking the accursed thing. Meaning through covetousness, they touched the same things and took the same things that the Most High told them to abstain from. Alright, go ahead. And have also stolen. And they have also stolen. Okay, they have also stolen. Go ahead. 
and dissembled also. Now you have a lot of people who think that spoiling the nations just means stealing from the nations. When this is a perfect example, when Israel did try to steal, and this particular individual we're going to reveal, who tried to steal what the Most High told him not to touch, or something that belonged to the other nations, which the Most High considered accursed, he was cursed for it. Okay, go ahead. And they have put it even amongst their own stuff. And it says they put it even amongst their own stuff. So they took the accursed thing, which belonged to the people of Jericho, and they tried to put it amongst their stuff as if it was theirs. Let's jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. And Khan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Most High of Israel. So Khan had to up and admit the fact that he was the one who sinned against the Lord. He was the one who touched the accursed thing. The question is, what was the accursed thing? It's going to show you. Go ahead. And thus, and thus have I done. Verse 21. And when I saw the spoils, a goodly Babylonian garment. So he saw the spoils. He saw this accursed thing, which was what? A goodly Babylonian garment. It was a goodly Babylonian garment. Go ahead. And 200 seculs of silver. Now keep in mind, it says spoils because the Most High had already caused the children of Israel to take down these people. And usually in warfare, once you take down the nation, whatever belongs to that nation is now what is called spoil or booty. It now belongs to you. So the riches and the certain things that belong to that society becomes yours. All right. Now keep in mind that this is even after we took down the people of Jericho, but yet the Most High told us there were certain things we we're not supposed to take or touch. Why? Because they were cursed. One of the things that were cursed was the Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and what? And a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. And a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Now, of course, we can look at this even in today's time. We can look at this and state that, well, couldn't the Khan use this to donate to the treasury of the Lord? Or couldn't he have used this 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 uh, unrighteous gain that he got in order to do something good for the Lord or to give to the poor, you know, so on and so forth. Some of the excuses that people use in order to do things they know is not right. All right. Couldn't he have used it for something good? He probably could have. But what was the problem? He broke the commandment and the covenant of the Lord. The Lord said, don't touch the accursed thing. He told him what to take and what not to take. And because he was covered to us, because he was greedy, he took what the Lord told him not to take. Okay, go ahead. And he was cursed for it, as we're going to read. Then I coveted them. And he coveted them. So he admitted that he coveted these items. Which means he had a, he had a desire, an insatiable desire to obtain these things he saw. He saw the beauty of this garment. And he just had to have it. He seen the money. And he just had to have it. He seen the gold. He just had to have it. Okay, go ahead. And took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent. And he knew he was wrong. So what did he do? He took the stuff, he took the garment, the gold, and the shekels, and he hid it. He buried it in the earth under his tent. Go ahead. And the silver under it. Go ahead. Verse 22. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent. So Joshua told his messengers, go into the tent and search the things that Akan buried under his tent. Go ahead. And behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. So everything he mentioned was under the tent, the garment, the gold, and the silver was under it. Go ahead. Verse 23. And he took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Most High. Go ahead. Verse 24. And Joshua now keep in mind, this is the, the action of one person, one individual, but yet the whole nation was cursed because of this person's action. To show you sometimes the selfish, selfishness that comes with the, the, the uh, greediness of gain. Okay, the covetousness of gain, riches, things we uh, consider to be valuable. We're willing to risk other people's lives, the whole, na the whole nation's life, just so that we can obtain the things that we covet. Okay, the things we have a desire for, such as finances and certain clothing, so on and so forth. All right, this still happens today. You got people who will sell out their whole nation by selling drugs, okay, killing their own people, doing certain things to their own people just to obtain a certain lifestyle. 
so they can have the flyers, the nicest clothes, the nicest car, the nicest house, the most money in their pocket. Okay, you got the same thing happening today. Go ahead. Verse 24, And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and his silver and a garment and the wedge of gold, and his sons and his daughters and his oxen. So you see that? Not only was Achan punished for his actions, his family and his cattle, his oxen were also cursed based on him and his insatiable appetite to obtain these items for his covetousness, in other words. Go ahead. And his asses and his sheep and his tent. They even took his tent, okay, his whole house. They took it and did what? And all that he had, and he brought them unto the valley of Accor. And they brought it to the valley of Accor. Go ahead. Verse 25. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? Why have you troubled us? How did he trouble them? By taking the accursed thing. Go ahead. The Most High shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones. So all Israel stoned him, his house, his daughters, and his oxen with stones. All right. And as we mentioned earlier, they even took the tent and stoned the tent with stones and did what? And burnt them with fire. And he burnt them with fire. Go ahead. After they had stoned them with stones. So after he got stoned, he got burnt with fire. Based on what? His greed. His covetousness. His lust for filthy lucre. All right. Going after the commandments of the Most High, or breaking the commandments of the Most High just to obtain a little bit of riches. Now, don't you think the Most High could have gave Achan and his family way more than that hundred shekels of silver and that wedge of gold and that little garment that he found? The Most High could have prospered them even more than what he obtained. Alright? But you know, sometimes the children of Israel were so hard-headed and stiff-necked, we think we got to go and make things happen for ourselves. Even after the Lord ensured us safety, well-being, he ensured health, ensured that he would take care of us in the land of Canaan, the land that flowed with milk and honey. Joshua 22 and 20. All right, and we're almost done. Just a few more precepts and we'll be done with this lesson and we'll take a little bit of time out to answer a few questions, okay? Uh, Joshua 22 20 Joshua chapter 22 verse 20 Did not Achan the son of Zerah commit a trespass and a cursed thing? So now it's mentioning again that Achan the son of Zerah trespassed by touching the accursed thing. Go ahead And wrath fell, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel. So the whole congregation of Israel felt the wrath of the Most High after uh, Achan Touched the accursed thing after he went after the desires of his heart to be covered to usness. The whole nation felt the wrath of one man, or based on the sin of one man. Go ahead. And that man perished not alone in his iniquity. And he perished not alone in his iniquity, meaning what? His family and his oxen and cattle, his sheep, his house, his tent, everything went and was destroyed based on his sin. That's what it means when it says that that man alone did not perish based on his iniquity. His whole family was punished. And this is what we do sometimes. We put our whole family in danger just for a few a few dollars. Okay? Just for some temporary gain. Some temporary wealth. We put our whole family in danger. Okay? And this is what the Lord is commanding us. This is why the Lord put these principles in the Bible. Not to labor to be rich. Not to chase after money. But to chase after the kingdom. To seek the kingdom. To seek the righteousness of the Most High. And then shall he add all these things unto you. That's what Akan didn't understand. Okay? Ecclesiastes 4 6. Alright, and hopefully you, you are getting these principles, these basic principles, even though it's milk. Okay? It's small, basic understanding, it's foundation, but yet sometimes we gotta be brought back down. We gotta get gravitated. Sometimes we go off into different things, but. It's these basics that's going to help us get through these end days. Okay? It's the understanding that you can't always be in the mindset of just trying to chase riches that's going to get you through these last days. Because a lot of us, it tells us, that we, as we read earlier, or we, we read in the uh, advanced lesson, in the Apocrypha, it says, Make not haste in the time of trouble, and, uh, and flee when you're brought uh, to a lower state. Flee not when you're uh, brought to a lower state. All right, which means that a lot of us, when we brought to a lower state, 
a lot of things come across our mind that we wouldn't normally do in a regular state, in a normal state. We start thinking about robbing people. We start thinking about killing people to obtain money, to quote unquote feed our families. All right. We start thinking about doing all types of crazy things, even selling drugs, prostituting sisters, just so you can obtain money based on your low estate. All right. So when those times get rough, it's going to be these principles. While you're in that low estate, it's going to be these principles that keep you from going out and trying to sell drugs. Because really, that, that hustle about to be cut off anyway with what they're bringing with this mark of the beast. All right. But anyway, you're going to, you're going to, uh, it's going to be these principles that keep you from selling drugs, that keep you from trying to prostitute your sisters, your daughters. Okay. That keep you trying to rob, keep you from trying to rob, kill and steal somebody just to obtain a little bit of money. Okay. Let's read out what you got. Ecclesiastes, uh, what's that, 6 and 2? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 6. Salakia, 4 and 6. Go ahead. Better is a handful of quietness. Better is a handful of quietness. Than both the hands full with travail and vexation and spirit. Than both the hands full of travail, vexation, and spirit. All right, and this is what Akan didn't understand. He would be better with empty hands of quietness, empty hands of peace, opposed to filling his hands with that accursed thing and heaping upon himself travail, vexation, and vexation of spirit. And this is a this is a lesson for all of us today too. All right, this is a lesson for us today also. It's better to have a handful of quietness, meaning a handful of peace, to be satisfied with what you got, opposed to going out and filling your hands with filthy lucre and riches gotten unjustly, and heaping upon yourself travail and a vex vexation of spirit. Okay. Proverbs 15 and 16. I'm going to show you. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 16. Better is little with the fear of the Most High. Once again, the same principle. Better is little with the fear of the Most High. It's better to be poor and have the fear of the Lord, which is keeping His commandments. Go ahead. Than great treasure and trouble therewith. Than great, uh, great treasure and trouble therewith. All right. There's the old verbiage more money brings more problems. All right. Where do they get that from? They may not know it, but that comes from the Bible. Okay? With the more treasure you get, the more problems you get. Okay? You start to separate a lot of people when, they, when they're poor in that state. They depend more on the most high. But the more they get riches, the more they forget, the more they separate from the spirit. And they start trusting in themselves, trusting in their own riches. They separate themselves from the most high. And that's when the trouble comes. Okay? Uh, Ezekiel 7 and 19. All right, because this is what's going to happen to the riches of this earth. A lot of people think it's about trying to get as much gold and silver you can get, which once again, we're not saying that you can't plan and try to do certain things to help your situation in the end. But you got to understand the prophecies of the Most High. All right, this is what's going to happen with the nations and their gold and silver and all the things they gathered together, which they thought they were going to use for themselves. All right, go ahead. Ezekiel 7 and 19. They shall cast their silver in the streets. You see that? The Bible states they shall cast their silver in the streets. Go ahead. And their gold shall be removed. And their gold shall be removed. Go ahead. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Most High. Read that again. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Most High. Now you see why it tells us in the book of Proverbs that a righteous man with very little is better than a rich man in wickedness or the riches of the wicked now you thought we were just philosophizing when we stated earlier that you can take all the riches of the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, the McDonald's, the Kennedys, the Bushes, the Clintons and all the top families of the earth and put it together in one pile and it still will not equal the riches of those who have very little okay those who are earning minimum wages but yet got the spirit and zeal to follow the Lord to keep the commandments of the Most High those who may be on public assistance and welfare, but yet got the fear of the Most High and the fear of the Lord to keep His commandments. Okay, they're richer than any billionaire, Bill Gates, anybody you can pull out, any uh, rich Saudi Arabian prince, or anybody you can pull out and say that they're the richest people on earth. The person that's on welfare, or the person that's low in this earth, as far as financial power, but yet got the fear and the zeal and spirit to follow the Lord, they're richer than the richest man on earth. Okay, why? Read that again. 
their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Most High. Because the silver and the gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. Go ahead. They shall not satisfy their souls. Their souls shall not be satisfied. Go ahead. Neither fear their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Because this is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Chasing money, chasing finances, chasing gold and silver. That's the stumbling block of your iniquity, your sin. All right. Let's get Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10. He that love of silver shall not be satisfied with silver. So if you love silver, you're not going to be satisfied with silver. Now if anybody is familiar with the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible, not Ecclesiastes or Sirach, but Ecclesiastes in the Bible. This was written by King Solomon, son of King David. Now basically what he wrote about in the book of Ecclesiastes are all the things that he experienced in the earth. He speaks about how he, he made observation of the certain things that we deal with on an everyday basis. And he found out that all things were vanity. All right. And then at the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, he made a statement. Okay. Now before we get that statement, we're going to read this again and give you the understanding. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. So King Solomon, through observation, figured out that he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Because the more silver you get, the more silver you're going to want. That's how the spirit trap you. That's how it open you up. Okay? You think you're going to get a little bit and be content? No. You're going to get a little bit, you're going to want more. You get more silver. You're going to want more and more and more. It becomes an addiction. Okay? Just like uh, nicotine, just like crack cocaine, just like marijuana, just like heroin, trying to get riches and chase money can become an addiction. Okay? And then there's the pain that comes with trying to keep your riches. Okay? All the trouble you got to go through to try to keep your riches to make sure nobody rob you, to make sure you don't go broke. All these things that come with amassing wealth. Go ahead. Nor he that love of abundance with, in with increase. This is also vanity. You see that? It's also vanity. Go ahead. Verse 11. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. It says when goods are increased, they are increased that eat them. Go ahead. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? And it says what is the good of them to the owner? Meaning, what good is the silver to the man who owns the silver? but for the beholding of his eyes. Because he's so entrapped with trying to keep his money and trying to keep his silver, the only thing is good for is for him sitting back and just looking at it. Okay, you got the silver, you, you, you gathered all the silver, now what are you gonna do with the silver? You're just gonna stare at it? This is what the Bible is stating. Okay, and this is what happens a lot of times. A lot of people get money, they get so much money, they don't know what to do with the money. They sit there and look at it, or you get people who just are just foolish and they follow the way of the world and they just get everything that the world told them to get. Okay? They go get a million dollar car, a $17 million house, and why, wonder why they broke in five, six years. Okay? When in reality, if you do come across something like that, you should use it to help, you know, help bring forth the, the, this, this, uh, this kingdom and help push this word throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay? That should be the purpose of gaining finances. All right, to be able to go out and travel, go out on expeditions to be able to teach the word throughout the four corners of the earth, to help the poor, the needy, okay, those who lack. That should be the reason you gain finances, not to just gain finances and just stare at them, stare at them and look at them and daydream of it, or, or just go out and just spend your money on things that are worth nothing in the first place, okay? Got people who spend $5,000 on a pair of sneakers. Wonder why they broke in the next two, three, four, five years. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 12. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much. It says the sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much. So a man that labors and is content with what he got, his sleep is good. He's satisfied with, with, with what he has. He's not losing any sleep at night thinking about his riches. Okay, go ahead. But what? 
But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep, which means he will lose sleep over thinking about losing his riches. Okay, this is the spirit people get into when they chase after riches and their, their love for riches is more than that of the love of their fellow man. Okay, let's move on. Let's get Proverbs 28, 22. Proverbs 28, 22, go ahead. Proverbs 28, 22. He that hastes to be rich, have an evil eye. He that hasteth, or he is quick to try to get rich, have an evil eye. Go ahead. And consider not that poverty shall come upon him. And he's not even thinking about the fact that poverty shall come upon him. All right. Go ahead. Sit on that. Yeah. All right. Let's get the book of uh, St. Luke chapter 16, verse 13. And it says he has an evil eye because his, his mindset is only based on getting more and more riches. Okay? That's the only thing his mind is set on, getting more and more riches. No matter what he has to do to get riches, he'll do it. Okay? He got to sell drugs. He got to kill people. He got to prostitute women. He got to do all types of things, come up with all types of schemes. Whatever he got to do to, to obtain riches, he'll do it. Okay? St. Luke 16, 13. Go ahead. St. Luke 16, 13. No servant can serve two masters. Now, the, the Bible tells us this is coming from Christ, our Lord, Savior, our Messiah, and our Master, Teacher. He said what? No servant can serve two masters. So Christ, with all the wisdom he had, came to the conclusion that no man can serve two masters. Why? For either he will hate the one and love the other. Because either you will hate one master and love the other. Go ahead. Or else will he hold to the one and despise the other. Or else he will hold to one and despise the other. Go ahead. You cannot serve God and man. You cannot serve the Most High and man. All right. Meaning you can serve the Most High in riches. Why? Because riches are a God unto themselves. Or well, they're God in themselves. Once you, once you uh, uh, accept the fact that you're going to worship and chase after finances and get as much money as you can get in the society... That becomes your God. Okay? Your religion becomes money. Alright? So now your whole life is based on principles on how to get more money. You choose the most high. The most high becomes your God. So now the only principles you're focused on is, focusing on is how to please and serve and seek the most high. That's the difference between the two. And the Bible says you can't serve the two. You can't be in the middle ground saying that, you know, I'm going to try to serve riches and serve the most high at the same time. It don't work like that. Okay? It don't work like that. So now the question is, what is the duty? What is the purpose of man? If we're not supposed to chase money, what is our purpose? Let's get the book of uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. And then we're going to show you what Christ also stated because Christ also spoke about the difference between the burden of this world and his burden. All right. The cares of this world and the burden that comes with Christ. Go ahead. Please, Please ask these 12 and 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Here's the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the most high. Fear the most high. And keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. For what? For this is the whole duty of man. Because this is the whole duty of man. Now a few years ago, a few years back, they had this book that came out uh, by this guy. I forget his name. But the name of the book was called The Purpose Driven Life. Now I've never read the book The Purpose Driven Life. But I can almost guarantee you, nine times out of ten, that this scripture was not contained within that book. Okay. They get all, this, all these philosophies about the purpose driven life. What is the purpose of man? But yet... The Bible had the, had the conclusion the whole time. The Bible had the purpose of man the whole time. Alright? Yet all these wise men of this world claim they got the purpose of life. Which is supposed to achieve in life. Now if it does have this reference in the book. I never read it so I don't know. But if it does have this purpose. Then I'll correct myself beforehand. But almost 9 times out of 10. I can bet you that this scripture is not contained in that book. Alright? And this in reality is the whole duty and purpose of man. The fear the most high and keep his commandments. 
not to chase money, finances, riches, and filthy lucre, but to fear the Most High and keep His commandments. Seek the kingdom and the Lord's righteousness, and all those other things shall be added. Okay, now let's go to the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, and the 25th verse. Uh, the last few precepts we're about to go over, and then we'll open it up for a few questions. All right, say Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. Matthew eleven twenty five, At that time Yeshua answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast said these things from the, from the wise and prudent. So Christ stated that he thanked the Most High because he hid these things, meaning this wisdom, the wisdom of this Bible, from the wise and prudent, and revealed it unto who? And has revealed them unto babes. And he has revealed them or made them known unto babes. What is Christ talking about? Let's hold that and get the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. All right, because the Most High hid the wisdom of this Bible, the deep mysteries and knowledge of this Bible from the wise and prudent. Those who have gained the credentials and the accreditations and all the different things that come uh, with going through the institutions of this earth, and he revealed them unto babes. Now we're going to get the understanding of what Christ meant. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. Foolishness. So for those that perish, the preaching of the cross is foolishness, meaning the preaching of Christ's sacrifice. Go ahead. But unto us which are saved. But to us which are saved, those who are uh, enduring until the end. Go ahead. It is the power of the Most High. It is the power of the Most High. Go ahead. Verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Because the Most High stated that he would destroy the wisdom of the wise, meaning the wisdom of this world. Go ahead. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And he will bring the, bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent, the so-called wise of this earth. Go ahead. Verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Go ahead. Where is the uh, disputer of this world? Where is the disputer of this world? Which meaning, what are, where is the high professors and the scribes who are going to stand up for the wisdom of this world against the wisdom of the Most High? Okay. Where is the great professor of this? The great master teacher that. Okay. Where's the guy with the master de degrees and the bachelor's degrees and all these different degrees who's going to come in battle against the wisdom of the Most High? Go ahead. Have not the Most High made foolish the wisdom of this world? Have not the Most High made foolish the wisdom of this world? Now keep in mind, we're going into why Christ stated that the Most High have hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them unto babes. We're going to show you who the wise are, or we're revealing who the wise are according to this earth, and we're going to reveal the babes. Okay, go ahead. Verse 21. For after that, and the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. The world by their wisdom, their foolish wisdom, their foolish knowledge knew not the Most High. If you want to know deeper what that's talking about, you go to Romans, the first chapter, start at the 20th verse, and read all the way down, where it speaks about the vain imaginations of mankind. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, but made unto themselves idols, worshipped the creature more than the creator. Then their foolish hearts became darkened, and their vain imaginations. Okay. Then they started going into alternative, so-called alternative lifestyles, homosexuality, lesbianism, okay, bestiality, so on and so forth. All right. So that's what it means when it says what? Read that again. It says, for after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. Because the world knew not the wisdom of the Most High based on the foolishness that they teach in this earth. Okay, their foolish worldly wisdom. It tells you in the Apocrypha that all knowledge is not wisdom. You got to remember, back in the beginning, you had two forms of wisdom. You got the, the knowledge of good and the knowledge of evil. That's the only type of knowledge that there is in the earth. There's no in between. Okay. So the knowledge of this world leans toward the what? The knowledge of evil. Okay? So just because it's so-called knowledge doesn't mean it's wisdom. Meaning, does it, that don't mean that it's going to obtain salvation. Okay? Don't mean that you're going to get the kingdom just because you have quote-unquote knowledge. Alright? Go ahead. What verse you at? Verse 21. Go ahead. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching. Now it's going into who the babes are. Okay. 
It pleased the Most High through the foolishness of preaching. Why does it state the foolishness of preaching? It's going to show you. Go ahead. To save them that believe. To save them that believe. Now it says the foolishness of preaching because it's a foolish thing to go out on the corner in a hot of day in the cold of winter and go preach to a hard-headed and stiff-necked people and tell them that the kingdom of the Most High is coming. Okay? To speak to people about an invisible realm which they can't see. Okay? They go speak in a society which tells you that God don't exist. Okay? To preach against a society that tells you that God don't exist, so on and so forth. So this is foolish to the world, but to us, this is what the Most High is going to use to bring people into the kingdom. Okay? So it says he used the foolishness of preaching. Who, do he, who does he use to speak or to preach? The babes. Okay? And not the wise of this world. Go ahead. Verse 22. For the Jews require a sign. For the Jews require a sign. Alright? And sometimes that's for better, and sometimes it's for worse. But that's how the Most High wired the children of Israel. He wired us and made us to operate on signs. For example, you go back to the book of Exodus, the fourth chapter. Before Moses went back into Egypt to tell the children of Israel that the Lord had spoke to him to deliver them out of the hand of Egypt from the house of bondage, he told the Most High to send them a sign. Because he said, listen, these people are not going to believe me. They're not going to believe that the Lord spoke to me to deliver them out of the land of Egypt. I need you to show me a sign. What did the Lord do? He told him to take the staff that was in his hand, throw it on the ground, and it became a serpent. All right. Then he told him to take his hand and put it in his bosom. He took his hand. He took out his hand and became leprous, white as snow. He put his hand back in his bosom, took it out, and became like his other flesh. Okay, because his hand originally was what it was dark skin. All right. Just to show you, also with Gideon, for those who remember the story in the book of Judges with the fleece. All right, Gideon said, uh, Lord, if you're really uh, telling me to deliver the children of Israel from the hand of the Midianites, just send me a sign. So what Gideon did was he took a cloth, a dry cloth, and he buried it in dry earth. And he told the Most High that if the cloth comes out wet, but yet the earth is dry, I'll believe that you're the one that sent me to deliver the children of Israel out of the hand of the Midianites. The next morning, Gideon went out took the cloth out of the earth, the earth was dry, yet the cloth was soaking wet. And after that sign, he believed that the Most High sent him to deliver the children of Israel out from the hand of the Midianites. Just to give you a few examples of when the Bible says that the Jews seek a sign, that's how the Jews been operating for a lot of, a lot of our history, okay, or through most of our history, we operated through signs, or the prophets operated through signs of the Most High. They would ask the Most High, show us a sign to show us that you really want us to do this or that it's really the Lord that's speaking with us. Okay, show us a sign. The Lord will show a sign and it will confirm their faith. Okay, but then there's the flip side. Okay, on the flip side, our people, we don't believe anything unless we see something. And sometimes it's to our own detriment. For example, 70 AD. Okay, that was to our own detriment. Okay. But reading on, go ahead. Which verse was that? 22? Verse 22. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Let's jump down to verse uh, 26. Verse 26. Which means the Greeks seek after wisdom. All right, go ahead. Verse 26. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. So, you, so Paul stated, you see your calling. That not many wise men, not many what? Not many mighty. Not many mighty, not many, not many strong according to physical appearance. Go ahead. Not many noble are called. And not many noble are called. <clears throat> Meaning that the these people who the earth esteem to be the great people of the earth, those who are very strong physically, those who are mighty, those who are wise, those who are noble, those who have a higher state in this earth, you notice that a lot of them don't come to the truth. And the Most High made it that way. Going back to the principle what Christ spoke about, the Most High revealed it not unto the wise and prudent, but unto the babes. Go ahead. Verse 27. Now we're going to tie this in with finances and riches. Go ahead. But the Most High have chosen the foolish things of this world. But he chose the foolish things of this world, talking about the babes, and did what? To confound the wise. To confound the wise. Now why are we foolish uh, according to this earth? Because we don't have the same credentials of this earth. 
A lot of us don't have the degrees, the masters, the bachelors. Not saying there's anything wrong with those things, but we don't have those. A lot of us don't have those things. Okay, a lot of us don't have the titles and labels of professors, professors and master teachers, so on and so forth. We don't have those titles, those labels. That's why we're considered foolish in this earth. But he used the foolish of this earth to do what? To confound the wise. To confound the wise. What are the people you're going to use to confound the so-called wise of this earth? Okay. Now we're going to show you how. Let's get the book of Amos, the 8th chapter and the 11th verse. Okay. And it's happening. It's already happening. Okay. A lot of the so-called wisdom of this earth is being confounded based on the knowledge that's coming out in the Bible in the last days. You even have scientists who for 10, 15, 20, even 30 years of their life have based their faith or their belief on science are now coming across the fact that the Bible had the answers the whole time. Okay, they're going back into the creation story and different references all throughout the Bible, Old and New Testament, and they're finding out that science don't really have the answers to their questions because there's so many gaps and so many things in science that can't be answered but can only be answered in the Bible. All right, so that's just a small example of how the Most High even now is using the foolish, the babes, to confound the wise. Now we're going to get back to, let's, before we get this, let's go back to the book of uh, Matthew 11. Let's get what we're going to get, uh, going back to verse 27. Okay, because Christ tells us that his burden is light. All right, and that's the key point we wanted to get out of there. Then we're going to go back to Amos, the 8th chapter, and show, you, and show you how the divine plan of the Most High is going to work in this earth for those who have the knowledge of the Most High, who may not have much, who may have little, but yet they keep the commandments, they fear the Most High, and they're doing His work. Okay? Let's go to the book. Let's go back to Matthew 11 and 27. All right? And get that. Matthew 11 and 27. All these things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to... And so if you want to get to the Father, you got to go through the Son. Okay, meaning the S O N, not the S U N for you Egyptologists out there who think we worship the Son. Okay, if you want to get to the Father, you got to go through the Son. That's what it means when it states, All things are delivered unto the Son. No man knoweth the Father but the Son. Okay, go ahead. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Verse 28 Come unto me, all ye that labor, and all. So, all you that labor, come unto Christ. Okay, all of you that are caught up and trapped in the society, all of you who are laboring in the society, trying to do right, trying to provide for your families, Christ is making a call to you. Read that again. Come unto me, all ye that labor. So all you that labor, come unto Christ. Go ahead. And are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Why? Because you're heavy laden in the society. You're heavy laden with the burdens and the cares of this world, this society. Okay, mentally, physically, and spiritually. So Christ says, come unto him, you heavy, you that are uh, heavy laden with burdens, and he will give you rest. Okay, go ahead. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you. And Christ says, take my yoke upon you. Now the question is, how is Christ going to give us rest? Let's hold that real quick and get the book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse uh, 11. Okay, matter of fact, Isaiah 28 and 9, real quick. To show you how Christ is going to give us rest. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 28 uh, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? To whom shall he teach knowledge? Go ahead. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom doctrine? shall he make to understand doctrine? Showing you that everyone will not receive the understanding and doctrine of this Bible. Go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk. They who are weaned from the milk. And drawn from the breast. And drawn from the breast. Go ahead. For precept. Those who have been raised on this milk. Okay. Or those who have been separated from the milk. That's what it means to be weaned from and drawn from. When you wean a baby off its milk, that means the baby is going past that stage where they no longer need the mother's breast. So they got to be weaned off so that they now can deal with more nourishing food other than milk. Okay. That's what it means to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So those who have went and obtained the milk and are able to now separate from the milk and now move on to the meat these are they who the Most High is going to reveal this, this knowledge to okay go ahead 
For precept must be upon precept. Go ahead. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Go ahead. For with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people. So with st stammering lip in another tongue, meaning another language, he shall speak to his people. Now this is going to show you how Christ is going to give us rest. Go ahead. Verse 12. To whom he said, this is the rest where... To whom with, he said, the Most High. Go ahead. This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. This is the rest. what? This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Remember Christ said he's going to cause the weary to rest? That he's going to take away the heavy laden burdens and give us rest? How is he going to give us rest? Through this Bible. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little with stammering lip and another tongue. Okay, that's how Christ is going to give us rest. Go ahead. And this is the refreshing. And this is the refreshing. Go ahead. Yet they would not hear. Yet they would not hear. Now it says he's going to cause the weary to rest. The question is, who is the weary? We know according to Daniel 7 and 25 that it states that he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Who are the saints of the Most High? Hold that real quick. Get the book of Psalms 148 and 12. Okay. He shall cause the weary to rest. The Bible tells us that this last kingdom on earth, the Roman Empire, would wear out the saints of the Most High. Okay, it also tells us in the book of De Deuteronomy that our feet shall not have rest. Okay, in the, in the land of our captivity. So we're the weary that the Bible speaks about. All right, but we're going to give you scriptures to be able to clarify it and prove it. All right. Psalms 148 and 12 to show who the saints are. Because once again, Daniel 7 and 25 states that he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Read that. Psalms 148 and 12. Got it? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Psalms 148, verse 12. Uh, both young... Uh, verse 14. Jump down to 14. Psalms 148, 14. Verse 14. He also exalt exalted the horn of his people. He also exalted the horn of his people. This is speaking about the Most High. Go ahead. The horn meaning the light. Go ahead. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Remember, it stated his people, all his saints. Go ahead. Even of the children of Israel. Even the who? Even of the children of Israel. Even of the children of Israel. So let's go back to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 28 verse 11. Identifying the weary. Alright. And you link that with Daniel 7 and 25. Alright. Isaiah 28 and 11. As a matter of fact, that verse you, you went afterwards, I think it was 12. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 12. So whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. So this is the rest that Christ was speaking about. Okay, this word. Go ahead. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. And this is the refreshing, yet the children of Israel would not hear. And that's the problem. The Mosai in Christ has given us the rest. He's taken away the burdens and the cares of this world with this word, but yet we don't want to hear it. Okay? We say in our minds that it can't be that simple. It can't be as simple as keeping the commandments and worshiping the Most High, getting uh, rooted and grounded in this word. It can't be that simple. But the reality is this. It is that simple. Okay? It is that simple. And that's the greatest secret they've been hiding the whole time in this earth. That make you think you got to chase all these things that the world put in front of you in order to get some level of uh, the, uh, get some level of status in this society, okay? To get some level of achievements in this society, okay? But the only achievement you should be working for is to enter the kingdom of heaven, okay? You can keep the the, the Forbes list, Forbes 100 list of top richest men in the earth, or top richest woman in the earth, so on. You can keep all that, okay? The only thing we're laboring for and working for is to enter into the kingdom. Okay, to seek the Most High first and have everything else added. Everything we need, the Lord will add. Okay, if, the, if you need a car, the Lord see you need a car in order to be able to travel from place to place, He's going to give you a car. Okay, the Lord see you need a house, so on and so forth, He's going to bless you with that if you need it. Okay, now if it's just one of your lusts, something you just want, the Lord is not dealing with that. He's not going to give you it based on what you want. Okay, and even the things we need, the Lord will give it to us in due season. Okay, which means we're not going to get it when we think we should get it. It's when we need it, it's when the Lord send it. Okay, uh, let's 
go back to where we were at in the book of Matthew. Okay, because this is a beautiful message that Christ is, is, is given to the children of Israel and his disciples. Go ahead. Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that are, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29. How is he going to give us rest? We just read it in the book of Isaiah 28 and 11. Go ahead. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And learn of me. You see that? That's why it says learn of me. How are we going to learn of Christ? Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, for with stammering lip in another tongue, meaning in another language, understanding that we will be in captivity under another language, Christ will reveal himself through this Bible. Okay, we will learn of Christ through this Bible. And by learning the truth of Christ and not the lies that have been put out through religion, we would have rest. Because through Christ we will find out our true identity. We will find out our true purpose. We will find out the things which pertain to us, the things which belong to us. Opposed to continually going through this cycle of chasing the things which belong to this world, the nations. Okay, trying to get rich and trying to get a status in their kingdom. Okay, go ahead. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Now we're stating that people who have achieved a high status in this earth won't come to the truth of the Most High and get the knowledge of the Most High. Absolutely not. Okay, as a matter of fact, it's, it's happening as we speak. Many people who may be considered high status in this earth are coming to the knowledge and truth of the Most High. Okay, so we're not, this is not just a bashing against people who have got that level of status but now are coming to the truth of Christ. Because we all were tricked and duped into believing this is what life was all about. Okay, but now the mysteries are being revealed, the knowledge is coming out. Okay, go ahead. For I am meek and lowly in heart. So Christ says he's meek and lowly of heart. Go ahead. And you shall find rest unto your souls. And you shall find rest unto your souls. This is the only way you're going to find rest. You're not going to find rest in this world. Okay, you're not going to find rest in the things of this world, the things which pertain to this world. You're only going to find rest in the things which pertain to Christ. Go ahead. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy. Because Christ's yoke is easy. Go ahead. And my burden is light. And his burden is light. All right. Now, last two scriptures. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 11. All right. Before you get that, get the book of Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. Because now we've got to ask ourselves if it's not going to be finances which keep us stable in the financial woes and the financial collapse of this society, what is going to keep us stable? We just read how Christ told us that we are to take on his burden because his burden is light. Now we're going to go back to the Old Testament to get more understanding of what's going to keep us stable. Even though the world is going through financial woes, recessions, and financial instability. So a lot of people talk about financial stability, but what about spiritual stability? All right. So go ahead and read that in the book of Isaiah 33 and 6. Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. What shall be the stability of thy times? And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Not gold. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Silver. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Sterling. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. British pounds. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. The U.S. dollar. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. The euro. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. The yen. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. So according to the Bible, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Okay. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. We just read earlier in the book of Ezekiel how the riches, the gold and silver is not going to save the wicked and the day of wrath. Okay. So you can amass, you can collect all that you want. And once again... I'm not saying it's, it's, it's wrong to get gold and silver if you're trying to use it to travel to get from place to place. But don't think that's going to be your salvation. You got a lot of people who think they're going to be saved through this, the collapse of this society through gold, silver, and getting different currencies. That's going to help you get from one place to the next. But at the end of the day, all of that stuff is going to fail. All right? And it's going to be the wisdom and knowledge of this Bible that's going to keep us stable. Okay? And we're going to, we're going to show you. Let's get the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and 11. All right. So what do you think is going to happen when this whole thing goes down, when this society goes down? 
when they're bringing in a one world order. When the only way you can get food, shelter, and raiment is if you accept the mark of the beast. Okay? And then you have people who got finances in this earth who are now losing a lot of their things and so on and so forth. What do you think is going to happen? Okay? Because the Bible tells us that a famine is coming into this earth. Okay? And this is going to be the greatest famine to ever take place in the earth. It's going to be greater than the famine of food and water. And we're going to read it in the book of Amos, the 8th uh, chapter in the 11th verse. Go ahead. Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the days come, save the Most High, that it will send a famine in the land. So the Lord said he's going to send a famine into the land. What type of famine? Is it going to be the f of, of bread and water? Go ahead. Not... Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water. So that answers your question. It's not going to be the regular famines you think of when there's a lack of bread and water. Even though that type of famine is also coming, <clears throat> there's an even greater famine that's coming to this earth. Go ahead. But of the hearing of the words of the Most High. But of the hearing of the words of the Most High. Okay. So what do you think is going to happen for those who have skipped the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High and chased riches when the time comes? They're going to go haywire. They're going to lose their mind. And they're going to be searching for those who have amassed and gathered the knowledge and wisdom of the Most High. Okay? And all of the things that they gathered together, they're going to be coming to those who got the knowledge and saying, Listen, I don't have much, but I gathered this. I got this amount of food ready. I got this amount of water ready. The only thing I need you to do is just let me know what's going on in this earth. Okay? What's happening in this earth? There's so many things going on. I, I have no idea. Okay, I tried to plan, but I didn't know things were going, you know, going to go in this direction. Things are worse than I even thought. Okay, and it's going to be the people who got the knowledge of this Bible, who are grounded and rooted, who's going to be able to give them the understanding. Okay, and then they, they may take you in for a few days, a week or so, just so you can teach them and show them what's going on. And now you got food, shelter, and raiment for a whole week. Okay, and you didn't even work physically to go and get the food, shelter, and raiment yourself. The only thing you did was learn the knowledge of the Most High. To get from one place to the next. Okay, so the Most High, just giving you a small scenario of how the Most High is going to use those or may use those who have received the riches of this earth to help those who got the knowledge of the Most High in the last days. That's actually Bible prophecy also. Okay, go ahead. Because <clears throat> the Bible tells you that your enemy shall entreat you well in the day of trouble or in a time of evil. Okay, in the book of Jeremiah, I believe it's Jeremiah 15 and 11, 16, uh, either Jeremiah 15 and 11 or Jeremiah 16 and 11. All right, and go, go ahead and check that to make sure it's correct. All right, go ahead. Verse 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north. So you're going to have people wandering from sea to sea to try to find what? The wisdom and knowledge of the Most High. And when they come across it, they're going to thank the Most High for it. And they're going to give everything they got just to get the understanding of what's going on in the earth. Okay? Just so they can get the understanding of the knowledge of the Most High. Okay, go ahead. And from the north, even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Most High. So they're going to be seeking the word of the Most High from to and fro, from the east to west, north to south. People are going to be coming to try to hear the knowledge of the Most High. Go ahead. And shall not find Not to chase riches because that time is going to be over. People are going to realize that the game is up. It was a trick the whole time to get you chasing money and to separate yourself from spirituality. So when the time comes, you're going crazy out of your mind. Okay? And those who really rooted in this understanding, who, who really understand the prophecies of Christ and understand what's going on in the earth, they're going to be operating fine. Not saying they're not going to experience trouble also, but they're going to have help along the way by those who may have gained things in this earth who are in a position to help. Okay, tying this all into to how we're not supposed to chase riches because this knowledge is going to it's going to take us a long way in this earth, especially in these last days. Okay, it's going to take us a long way than gold or silver can ever take us. Okay, go ahead. And shall not find it. And they shall not find it. Okay, which means you're gonna have people who searching all over and they still not going to find the truth. Okay, so this is the key. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Okay? Last scripture, the book of James, chapter 2, verse 5, and that'll end today's Sabbath lesson.
Okay, James 2 and 5. Go ahead. James chapter 2, verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not the most high chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? So James said to listen, my brethren, have not the most high chosen the poor of this earth, but the rich in faith? That's what it means when you go to the book of Revelation 2 and 9 when it says, I know thy poverty and tribulation, or I know thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Okay? Talking about the poor in the world, but those who are rich in faith. Okay? This is who the Most High chose. Go ahead. It says, Hearken, my, be my beloved brethren, hath not the Most High chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised, to them that love him. And that's the key. The Most High have promised these things to those that love him. Not those who got the most gold, silver, riches, the most money, the biggest house, the nicest car, the nicest clothes. The Most High didn't choose them. Okay? He chose those who love him. Those who keep his commandments. Even though they may be poor physically on this earth, they got the zeal, love, and fear of the Most High. Alright? So hopefully this uh, helps you all understand our stance uh, when it comes to uh, chasing money, riches, and finances in this earth. Okay? It's time to link into the spirit. Now, are we telling people to up and just quit their jobs? Or if people are going through school and those things, are we just telling people up to leave school and so on and so forth? No. Okay? That's not what we're stating. Because you still got to take care of your family. You got bills to pay. You got rent. You know what you got to take care of. So don't use this as an example to leave your job. And when your family come down on you, you blame us because you stated that we told you to quit your job and stay, stop chasing riches. Okay, there's a, difference, there's a difference between supporting your family and chasing riches and finances. Okay, based on lust. Alright. So with that, I want to say bless you all and shalom. Uh, we're going to take a few questions before we close out today's lesson. Let me first save the video.